What's up guys? So today's video, we're going to talk about the difference between working with codoms opposed to working with recessives. What's up YouTube? It's Baker. Welcome back to Blue Line Morphs guys. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. We are a new ball python breeding channel. Completely and totally transparent, the good, the bad, the highs and lows, etc., etc., and everything in between. We've got an Instagram channel, blue underscore line, underscore morphs, and a Facebook page, blue and morphs. I post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, at least for now. So definitely check me out on social media. Definitely check me out on Instagram. Uh, I post in there daily. I'm on there pretty much throughout the day. So definitely him over there. Return back to the channel, guys. Welcome back. Uh, it's going to be Monday's video. Uh, it's Sunday night for me. Hope you had a great weekend. I've been slacking with the Uber Eats thing, but no big deal. I'm gonna try to get it going again. Um, other than that, guys, no real update. I fed off that African software clutch, right? We know that. Also, I had a lot of temperature issues in here. You see, I got the gauge behind me. Um, I got a couple things I had to purchase today to kind of get this thing right. Uh, so I'm gonna make a video about that probably for the weekend about how in New York it, it dropped, you know, from 70 to 75 degrees all the way down to like 39 at some points throughout the day and night. How my reptile room was holding a good temperature. And I woke up this morning about 68 degrees ambient temperature in here. Not good. So I definitely made steps to fix that. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did, how I did, and what I've seen so far over the last like four or five hours. There's been a huge difference in the behavior of my snakes, obviously, guys, in my videos now because I have the temperature staying at 81 degrees in here. I'm going to be sweating. So I apologize. From now, pretty much until the spring sometime. Uh, as far as the incubator stuff, um, I think I kind of figured out what's wrong with my incubator. Why I was having those hot spots, why it was too hot, and why I couldn't get it to regulate. So I ordered something. It should be here on Thursday. So I'm probably going to include that in that temperature video. Um, hopefully I can get this thing actually up and moving. If not, my buddy over there, Sal, at Gomez Pythons, if I end up having a clutch early, if I did start pairing up, we're going to... Um, He'll hook me up and I'll be able to bring him over to his house, whatever the case may be. So we're doing good. All right. So today's video, I've been getting this question a lot. Um, again, I'm a new ball python breeder. I'm not claiming to be anything other than that. But people have been asking me if I want to make something, how do I go about making it? Um, specifically, people have been asking about recessive genes, right? They want like an orange dream, yellow belly, pied snake or something like that. How do they go about making that? What items do they have to buy? What snakes do they have to buy? So I thought I'd make a video kind of talking about the difference between codoms and recessives and how if you want to make a certain snake, how codoms you can do it pretty much in the first year if you want, or and then recessives, it kind of takes a season or two or a generation or two depending. So let's get right into this. I'm, I'm going to try to explain this visually with snakes. Now, obviously you guys know what I have behind me, the few snakes I'm going to use. Probably use Big Mama as a normal, and bananas and stuff like that, or clowns. Um, obviously, I'm going to change the sex and stuff like that for the demonstration or for the example. So just bear with me. So if you see me saying, hey, Big Mama's a big normal male, and you're like, that's oh, Big Mama. Yeah, okay, yeah, I get it. I know what my snakes are. Anyway, so let's get into this. First and foremost, so this is probably going to be geared towards people who are just getting into breeding or just getting into like the genes or the morphs and stuff like that. So a codon essentially is just like, it, it, it's, it's a gene where if one of the parents has it, whether it's pastel, orange dream, yellow belly, something like that, it has a 50% chance of passing, well, passing it on to the offspring and it being visual. So if you have a normal male and an orange dream female and you breed them together, uh, all the babies have the 50% chance of being a visual orange dream. Okay, it's that simple. It doesn't carry out any, like, any hits, okay? It's either it's going to have it visually or it's not going to have it, okay? I'll probably do a video uh, more in depth about genetics. If you want me to do that, comment down below at least how I understand it and what kind of helped me to understand it. All right, so let's segue over to recessives. So in order to get a recessive gene to, to fit and to be visual, you have to have one of three different combinations, right? You have a visual to a visual. That is, you have a pied snake to a pied snake and all the babies will be pied. You can have a visual pied to a het, meaning that one of the babies has a het, we'll talk about that in a second. You breed them together, you have a 50% chance that the babies will be all visual pies. Or you can have a het and a het, hopefully hit the odds, and you make a visual, or you can have, uh, obviously, a visual and a visual, we'll talk about that. So, now, let's say you wanna work with codons. So the reason I'm making this video is when I, I went up to get that pastel uh, clown pied female, uh, Aaron's got one hell of a collection up there in a PA, or out west of PA, but, not but, but he has a lot of uh, codoms. And I found that really, really interesting because 
this kid's gonna be hitting some bangers right off the bat, right? He has some females with, with four codons, and some males with three or four, and right away he's gonna be hitting bangers, and it's really gonna show in the first season or two breeding because of the way it passes on. But then conversely, I had a lot of people ask me questions about if I wanna make the snake, what do I gotta do? And I had to kinda of explain to them that if you wanna make that, you gotta make your own hats and go from there. So let's get right into this. I'm gonna try to use some visual examples. All right, so let's say you wanna make banana orange dreams, let's say, okay, for argument's sake. Or let's say you want to make banana pastels. Let's do it this way. So let's say you want to make a banana pastel. That's your dream snake. That's what you want to make. Now, we all know this is my female banana head clown girl, but she's the only all banana snake I have. The only other banana I have had a lot of code on the top of it, or it's pie. So it's not going to work for this example. So let's say you want banana pastels, okay? That's what you really, really want. Don't bite me, you bastard, you. That's what you really want. Okay. So here's a big pastel male, and here actually is a banana female. That kind of works, okay? Now let's say I really want a banana pastel snake. I breed them together, okay? So in the first year of breeding, let's say I'm fortunate enough to get, let's keep it, let's keep it round. I'm not saying this is, this is what normally happens, but let's say you get 10 eggs, for argument's sake. Now, realistically, having banana from the female and pastel from the male, there's a 50% chance that the baby will get this, 50% chance the baby will get this, and you have a good chance that you're probably going to hit a couple of banana pastels in your first year of breeding, right? That makes sense. So if I have one codom animal, which is the banana, one codom animal, which is the pastel, I breed them together. In my first year of breeding, I have a chance of hitting a baby that has both the pastel and the banana. I have a chance of creating that banana pastel that I'm talking about. That's when you work with codoms. You can take it a step further, right? Let, let's say for, I'll use this example. And this is actually what I'm, I'm looking to do this year. So let's say I really like that Coral Glow Black Pastel Trick Mojave male. Where is he? He's right here. I really like this guy. He's got four codons in him, right? Coral Glow Black Pastel Trick Mojave. And let's say I really like this girl. This is my big old orange dream fire girl. Okay, look at this size difference, right? Man, she ain't 280, she ain't a lady. So she's like 2,700 ground, grams and he's about 1,100 grams. So let's say I really want Orange Dream on top of this guy. Simple. I breathe them together and there's a chance that the babies will have all his genes and Orange Dream from her in the first season of breeding. Because all the babies, all, all the traits that the male and the female have, the parents have, there's a 50% chance that they're going to pass them on to the baby and be visual. So when you're making codoms, when you're breeding codoms, and you're just strictly breeding codons, you can really progress your collection further in the first year because in the first year of breeding, your babies might show the visual traits that are coming from the parents. Now, if you want to work with recessives, okay? I'm going to use pied for this example, okay? So let's say I really, really want to make this. I really want to make a banana pie ball python, right? It has that banana codon with the pie, right? The recessive gene, the pie ball. Let's say this is what I want to make, and I want to make this thing in the worst way. But, unlike the codon, it's going to take you a couple generations. So let's say you want to make that banana pie. Let's use this girl again. Let's say this is my girl. I got a big old female banana, okay? Then you come over here, I'll grab this other girl here because she's smaller than the other pie. And then let's say this is a male for argument's sake. We know this is not a male. This is my other female. But, so here's a visual pie ball normal. Okay, let's say it's a male. It's not a female. And here is my banana female. But I really want to make those banana pie snakes. How do we do that? Now, in the first year, you breed these two together, you're not going to get that visual banana pie. So I, ha I actually had somebody ask me saying, I want to make a banana pie snake. How do I go about it? This is how you go about it. You're going to have to breed the banana female to the normal pied snake, and all those babies, you have 50% chance they're going to come out banana. All the babies that come out banana will all be het for pied, meaning they carry this recessive gene inside of them, and they, they don't show it visually. And now you have the first generation of snakes. All your snakes that come out of this clutch that are banana, they'll all be het pied. Now you got to take them again. Now let's say you get a female, het, a female banana het pied, then you have to take that female, raise her up, then breed her back to the dad that's visual. Then hopefully you get a baby 
that hits on both the visual pied and their head pied and also the banana on top of that to come out that way. Or what you need to do is you need to take a, a male from the original clutch that's banana head pied and breed it to a female pied or head in order to create that banana head, that banana pie rather. So my point is this, when it comes to working with recessives, we all like the recessives, they all seem to be a little bit more money. And why do they seem to be a little bit more money? Because when you start stacking other genes on top of the recessives like the banana pies, it takes a generation or two. Where when you work with just the codons, in that first year of breeding, let me put these things down. In that first year of breeding, if I wanted to make that banana pastel, I can make it in the first year of breeding, no problem. Each baby has a 50% chance of getting the gene from the parent. But if I want to make that banana pie snake, you're going to have to take a couple generations to make it on your own. you got to make your own heads that carry the piebald gene within it. Then you have to breed it back to the original parent or find another snake that's visual. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I hope that kind of cleared things up for everybody. But that is really the, that's why you see these recessive snakes costing more money or being more of a pain in the butt to work with because it takes multiple generations to, to have a visual snake when you start wanting to make, start making things. Hope that kind of clears it up. Comment down below, let's talk about it. But in other words, just to break it down, Kodam, you want that pastel banana? First year breeding, you can produce that pastel banana. If you want that banana pie, the first year of breeding, you have a banana and a pie bowl, you have to make your own heads, raise those heads up, then breed them back to the parent, then you have a chance of making it in year two or three, where when you have the codoms and you predominantly work with the codoms, you have a chance of making it in the first year. That to me is the biggest difference when it comes to working recessives. They're harder to make, they take longer for the projects, that's why I see the price tag, and that's why you see it taking longer for these snakes to start popping out. So I hope that helps some people. I had a couple people ask me those questions. They wanted to make, I think two people said they want to make banana pie just because I showed off my one banana pie mail. How do I go about making that? I have a banana, what do I have to do? That's what you have to do. You gotta buy, make your own hats, wait a couple of generations, raise them up, and keep them going. However, if you wanna work with just codoms, it's really easy. Not that it's easy, but you have the one snake, you have the other snake, you breed them together. They, you could produce what you wanna produce in the first year. So, hope that helped you guys out. Quick Monday video. Hope everybody's being safe. As always, guys, be safe. Please remember, watch your six.